Hey guys, Mr. L here. Um, so we are currently looking at the problem set for lesson eight. And what we're doing is we're going to continue finding the proportional relationships. Okay. So the problem set number one, it looks like there's a lot of questions, but they're all kind of along the same. Once we get to five and six, it gets a little more complicated. We'll take a little more time on that. But for the first ones, these are things that we've been doing all along. So I'm going to move a little bit quicker on that. All right. Write an equation that will model the proportional relationship given in each real world situation. An equation is a math sentence with an equal sign in it. We, we know that. So there are three cans that store nine tennis balls. Right. So we know that my ratio is three cans to nine tennis balls. Find the constant of proportionality. Well, I need to figure out how many per one can. So nine over three is going to give me three. So K equals three. So then I know that three K equals Y. I'm sorry, not three K. Three X equals Y. My constant of proportionality times my x, the number of cans, is going to get me to the y, right? Just real quick, we'll do a chart. So if I have one can, I have three tennis balls. If I have two, I have six. If I have three, I have nine, right? So my constant of proportionality, k equals three. In 25 minutes, Lee can run 10 laps around the track. Determine the number of laps she can run per minute. So we want to know per minute. So the per is always going to go on the bottom. So if it's 25 minutes and it's 10 on the top, then I just need to do some quick division here to do 10 divided by 25. Which is going to get me to 4 tenths, which we should be able to do in our head because uh, 25 times 4 would give me 100, but I'm only multiplying. Or I'm trying to get to 10. So... Uh, 4 tenths. So k equals 0.4. Write an equation that represents the relationship 0.4x equals y. Or I could do it this way. I could say k equals or 0.4 equals y over x. Jennifer is shopping with her mother. They pay $2 per pound for tomatoes. And I remember the per goes on the bottom, so $2 per pound. Two over one, that just means two. So k equals two. Write an equation. 2x equals y. Or 2 equals y over x. Same thing. It costs $15 to send three packages through a certain shipping company. Consider the number of packages per dollar. Dollar is going to go on the bottom. So it's 15 over 3, which is going to end up equaling 1 fifth or 0.20. Okay. Write an equation to represent the relationship. And again, guys, if you're doing this the way I did this was I took three fifteenths and I divided them each by three to get to one fifth. And I know that one fifth is 0 0.20. So here we have 0 0.20x equals y or 0 0.20 equals y divided by x. On average, Susan downloads 60 songs per month. An online music vendor sells package prices for songs that can be downloaded onto personal digital devices. The graph below shows the package prices for the most popular promotions. Susan wants to know if she should buy her music from this company or pay a flat rate of $58 per month offered by another company. Which is the better buy? Well, first, let's take a look at how much she's paying currently. If she pays 58 songs per, or I'm sorry, $58 per month, and 60 songs per month. I want to know what is the price she's paying per song. So I'm going to do my $58 per song. For every one song, I'm going to pay how much? So I'm going to do 58 divided by 60. And go ahead, you can plug that into your calculators. Because again, we're not checking the division process. We're checking to see if you know how to 
divide, or if you know how to find the unit rate, right? So what that's going to come out to is 0.966666 repeating. So that's uh, 97 cents when we round that up. Find the constant of proportionality for this situation, which is the situation that it's represented here in the graph, right? So looking here, my numbers, I have 0, 0. I have 5, 4.5. I have 12, 10.8. I have 20, 18. And then the last one I'm out of room here is 40 and 36. Ay, ay, ay. I need to get my screen cleaned, I think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Y, 4.5. Put over my x of 5. And then we may be able to, if we just move the decimal point over 1, then that becomes 45. And then 45 divided by 5 is 9, but we move the decimal point over. So this becomes 90 cents. And let's just check that and make sure that that is accurate for each of them. And we're going to do that in a couple of ways. We can either continue doing our multiplication, or I'm sorry, division, or if we think that this is the constant proportionality, then I can take and multiply my x times that. So 12 times 9 would get me, or times 0.9 gets me 10.8, and so on. In here, 20 times... 0.9, same thing. So we know that it is proportional. We know that it's 90 cents. So find the constant of proportionality for this situation, k equals 90 cents. Write an equation that represents the relationship. Well, same thing we did above, 0.90x equals y. Use your equation to find the answer to Susan's question above. Justify your answer with mathematical evidence and a written explanation. So which is the better buy? So the better buy is the graph because, just spelled because wrong. I do that a lot. Um, 0.90 is less than 97 cents. There's not a lot of room here, so I'm okay, guys. We, we've already proved our mathematical thinking all over here. If we had room, I would want you to write out that, you know, the constant proportionality for the first one and the constant proportionality for the second one. Um, I wish it had names of music vendors, even if it made something up like ice moons or something like that. Um, but in this case, we can just say the graph is better than the 97 cents. Now, if she were to buy 100 songs per month, and I'll go over here, if, I, if she were to buy 100 songs per month, and she were paying $58, well, then that would end up being only 58 cents per song, and that would be a much better deal. But because she's only buying 60 songs per month, then this other one is the, the second one is the better deal. The graph is the better deal. All right, six. This one gets complicated here. Allison's middle school team has designed t-shirts containing their team name and color. Allison and her friend Nicole have volunteered to call a local stores to get an estimate on the total cost of purchasing t-shirts. Printorama charges a setup fee as well as a fixed amount for each shirt ordered. The total cost is shown for the given number of shirts. Value tees and more charges $8 per shirt. Which company should they use? So what we run into here, the situation that we run into on this one, is we only have two sets of data that we can figure out. So let's take the 95 and divide that by 10 to figure out the constant of proportionality, which is 9.5. And let's see if this is the same over here. So we'll do 375. That's really messy. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more, guys, okay? so maybe this is a little bit clearer for us. Okay. 
we'll do 375 divided by 50. And again, I'm okay with us using calculators on this. 375 divided by 50 comes out to 7.5. So we do not have a constant rate, which means that we are not going to be able to figure out. But if we know that this is 9.5, at 10 shirts and at 50 shirts, it's now 7.5. We can assume, because it's not telling us what the setup fee is for Printorama, we can assume that we have a better deal for value T's and more. Now for value T's and more, if I look at this, I have 80 over 10, which equals eight. I have 160 over 20, which equals eight, and 400 over 50, and I cross out, cross out, because those two, and then I have eight again. So this does have a constant rate of $8 per shirt. Does either pricing model represent a proportional relationship between the quantity of t-shirts and the total cost explained? Right in a, uh, so yes. Printorama has a proportional rate of eight. Write an equation representing relating cost in shirts for value T's and more. Oh, I'm sorry. So this was not printorama. This was value T's. This is value T's. So my rate is 8, x equals y. 8 times x equals y. What is the constant of proportionality of value t's and more? Well, k equals 8, which is one shirt for $8. How much is Printorama's setup fee? So now we need to figure out how much that setup fee for Printorama is going to be. Once we figure out what the setup fee is going to be, then we can figure out how much it's going to cost per shirt. 